guys welcome back to my channel and today is episode 4 of me versus anxiety and I'm going to be talking about my triggers so there's quite a few I think so basically one trigger I know and I've spoken about before is my plans changing um, if I have to change my plans if it's a plan that I was excited for I got really stressed and really angry and it just makes me cry and I just go a bit dramatic and I don't know why. And yeah, so plans changing, I think I've spoken about many times, is definitely one. Um, a huge trigger was when I put on a bit of weight in 2016. That is what's caused my body dysmorphia and what's made me so insecure about my body and... Um, yeah, hate pictures of myself all the time and see things that no one else can see. But I will. I've never, ever, ever let anyone see these pictures before. But I'll put on the screen a picture of me from 2016 that I absolutely hate, and I'll also post one that Nathan has photoshopped of me with the one, one before it's photoshopped. These are pictures that I've never been seen and I never wanted anyone to see but I thought for me to like tell you the truth about like my triggers. This is definitely what's caused my body dysmorphia so I thought it's best that I did tell you guys and show you it. Um, and also a little story is I'll put in a picture now. That picture I absolutely hated. I was blended into the background and I said to everyone, please do not post that because I look like a fridge. I hate it. Please, please, please don't. Anyway, Julia decides to post it and guess what picture gets put in the newspaper? That one. So yeah, that wasn't great. That was nasty. I didn't like that. Like, Julia didn't mean to do it, but, you know, she did it. So yeah. By the way, this is another day I'm filming this part, so different, but I don't want you all to like think that all my photos are photoshopped because they're really not. That's one of the only ones that's ever been photoshopped. Like, I don't agree with photoshopping yourself at all, but it was the only picture we all got as a five on Britain's, on the day of Britain's Got Talent, and we couldn't not post a picture. But I, I hated it that much that... There was no way I was going to let it go up apart from if I look different. So, like, I do not agree with Photoshop and I don't think it's a good thing to do. I think it's bad when people Photoshop celebrities and stuff. But in this case, it's what I wanted to make me happier. So, but none of my other pictures are Photoshopped. Just that one. Another trigger I found is change as in, not just changing my plans, as in changing say environment or I don't know course at college so basically I did a year at this college but I wasn't enjoying it so I quit it but it meant I had to start another college in September which I did a year of but because it was all people I didn't know I'm not good at meeting people or speaking to people I'm a very antisocial person I don't like like speaking to people and meeting new people I'm not very outgoing so yeah, I'm very shy, so I find that really hard, so I had to do that, and I did it, I had to go to the audition on my own, because my mum was in America with Julia, and I did it, it wasn't easy, like, but I, I still did it, um, yeah, and so, I am, I have decided to move course again, but at the same college, because I was doing a musical theatre course, but I wanted to do more dance, and I watched the dancers show, and I just loved it, so I was like, I want to do that, so, in... Well, I will have started it yesterday when you're watching this. 
I will be meeting new people, starting a completely new course, which is making me very nervous. Like, I've been overthinking it for like weeks. Like, starting, meeting new people. Oh, yeah. Like, all the activities they make you do on the first day. Like, I don't want to speak to anyone. It's so bad. I'm just so shy and I just don't do that. I just, yeah. That's definitely a trigger, is changing of environment and people and stuff. So, yeah. Um. So, another one is when I was on the next step, I hated what I looked like, but also when I got all nose, I didn't mind getting all nose because I knew I wasn't going to get through, I wasn't great of a dancer then, I've improved. Like, it was fine, but they made me like walk into a room full of people who got yeses to say I got a no, and they made me be on camera when Julia got a yes to tell me she got a yes, which I it's TV, like, it, I, I should get used to it, but I found it really hard, and, like, when I watched it, I just cried my eyes out, like, really badly cried my eyes out, I hated watching it back, it was awful, and I'd say that's what was a trigger for Britain's Got Talent when I had a meltdown the night before, I was scared of rejection and feeling how I felt, because it made me go through a very sad and dark stage of my life then. It wasn't taking the next step's fault, but that experience did make me go through a bit of a rough patch. And so I thought, I don't want to go through that again when Britain's Got Talent. I I can't deal with that sadness again. I'm not ready for it. I'm not ready to go back on TV yet. So that triggered me to not want to do Britain's Got Talent, definitely. And as people said the night before, I had a massive meltdown, I slammed to the floor, I was crying my eyes, I was punching the floor, I was just so nervous. So that's definitely a trigger. I've always not been great at staying out, so I can stay out at Nathan's, fine. And like, people who are close to me, so like Mersey girls, I can stay at their houses. But I don't like staying anywhere more than one night really, bored the people I'm close to and I feel like in a safe environment with. That's definitely like a trigger. I start to feel stressed, I'm homesick, I get really bad homesickness. Um, so yeah, if I'm with my mum somewhere, I don't, I don't mind, but I don't like being away from my mum much, and like, I know I should probably get a grip on myself because I'm 18, but it's just the way I am, and yeah, that's a trigger, I just start going a bit crazy. Um, these are triggers and fears, so like, I, with my fear of dying, my death anxiety that's definitely triggered when I'm in certain environments so like I said in my previous vlogs in the theatre or at a train station they trigger me and they make me feel uncomfortable and yeah I just always like last night I was in the car on my own waiting for Nathan to come out of his house and it was like quite late at night and I was just was seeing things like I see black shadows it's really weird but yeah and I just think I'm gonna die basically and terrorist attacks are a massive fear of mine so I have a lot of dreams about them I'm quite messed up so I often do dream that I'm involved in one and that I'm gonna die in one so that's definitely a big trigger another trigger is if someone takes forever to no so I was reading an article on anxiety because it came up on social media and I was just reading through it and I was like whoa because it was literally everything that happens to me was on it and one of them was when people take ages to reply back to you so I will always reply straight away and if that person doesn't reply back my brain instantly just thinks well they don't like me or something stupid like they don't want to speak to me anymore I'm just getting really annoying and my brain just instantly goes to the worst, so like something's happened to them, or I don't know. Yeah, if I don't get a reply straight away, like I start to stress and panic. So that is definitely a big trigger, like slow replies. That sounds really stupid saying out loud, but yeah, that definitely is one. So I used to hate interviews because I'm so shy, and I just used to like feel like I was going to mess up what I say. But like since doing with BC, like I enjoy them now, and I'm so much better at them. And, I really like them now, but I did used to hate them and that was definitely a trigger because I was nervous to make a mistake. Here's a big trigger. I am the biggest perfectionist I've ever met and if I can't do something first time, I'll give up and say, well, I can't do it, I'm never going to be able to do it because I'm not good enough. Not good enough, that's what I always say to myself. 
like I'm never going to be good enough, I'm never going to get it anyway, so I'm just going to give up trying, which is the complete wrong thing to say to yourself, but that's what I do. If I can't get something straight away, that's it, I'm done, I'm not trying anymore. Like, I just give up. That's a big trick, as to say, if we're doing a dance move and I can't do it, I just give up or like yeah and it makes me go crazy like i will just kill myself inside i'll be like you're not good enough you can't do it you're never gonna be able to do it and i'll just yeah whoa yeah it's not great oh okay so another trigger i can't stand arguing like nathan and julia think that i enjoy it because i start it but that's the problem is i'm very opinionated like if if I don't think I've done anything wrong and I think they're accusing me of something I've not done, like I'll argue about it because I know I've not done that or I can't see their point. But I don't like to argue, I just don't like like getting walked over, I won't get walked over. So like I just get my point across and I guess it can make people confused because they're then like, you do like arguing, you start an argument right now and I'm like, I don't because after this I'm going to go and just want to like die inside. like. I won't if I've not if I've had an argument with Nathan and he drop he's it's on the way home and he's dropping me off home, I won't get out of the car until like he's reassured me we're okay and that he still loves me and like I will go home and overthink everything that happened and replay the whole argument, being like, I could have said this, I should have said that. Yeah. So arguing I absolutely hate it. I get adrenaline. I I just can't I can't do it. I'll just I'll just think that say Nathan's gonna break up with me or Julia's gonna hate me or Mum's gonna hate me and I will I won't leave the uh, the house at an argument, I won't go to sleep on an argument. I have to say, like if I'm saying at Nathan's I have to message my mum and Julia and like love you in case they die in the night, I know it's stupid or I die in the night. Or if I'm at home I have to message Nathan it, I have to say it to him before I go to sleep every night. Just cause then like I'm reassured and like I know that say something did happen, I know this is really pessimistic, but say something did happen and I died or they died my last words to them would have been like love you or love you or whatever so yeah i hate arguing it's the worst i guess when i go to buy something i always stress about the money like i keep counting it over and over and over and over and then i start to panic myself so that's another trigger is i know i've got the right money but it's the rush of giving it in and then packing your bag and then the person behind you waiting to pay for their stuff after you and I'm not finished packing my stuff yet. like that all triggers me like I just get so nervous I'm a very nervous anxious person as you all know so any scenario like that or if I don't have the right change or my bank card doesn't work in in a shop like I'll just immediately stress and panic and thank you so much for watching and I hope this helps or if you can relate know that you're not alone and other people do go through it too and Give me a message if you can relate or yeah, just let me know if you're liking the series. Bye guys. So I just got back from my first day back at college. It was just like induction day, so like meeting all the first years, but I didn't know any of the second and third years, which is who I'm with. Cause like, they all have their own friends. Like, to just trigger my anxiety to go crazy Cause, like I said before like that's one of the triggers anyway starting new things that's what it looks like when you can't cope with your anxiety kids it's the real me I'm just trying to stay positive struggling